Tim Spector is a British medical doctor who is maybe most famous for founding a company called Zoe. Pretty much every health and fitness podcast has had him on as a guest. And despite a stellar clinical and academic career, some of his clips have gone viral for being quite controversial, especially when he's sharing his thoughts on general health and fitness practices. So as someone who is nowhere near the caliber of Tim Spector, but has spent many years dedicated to studying exercise science and health research, and having also published several studies in the area, I thought it might be interesting to react to some of his claims. Now to preface this, anything I say in this video is my opinion. So I've picked a few random ones here. Let's have a look at the first one. So this is on some nutrition devices giving relating to oats, but he's obviously on some sort of podcast. Let's have so a look. If you like oats, and I know Americans love their oatmeal uh, in the morning, think it's a healthy food. Um, it has hu really high levels of glyphosate when the people have tested breakfast cereals. So we're gonna stop it there, this is quite a short clip. So by saying that most people think oats are healthy, I think he's basically implying that they're not healthy due to various chemicals that are applied during the cultivation. And I do have a, a bit of an argument against this. I mean, oats are one of the oldest crops that we've cultivated as humans. And as a result, we have many years of studies looking at oats and the effects on our health. And the evidence is pretty conclusive now that introducing oats to your diet seems to be pretty positive for your cholesterol profile. It also contains a, a very good amount of fiber, which we already know is healthy for our gut, and a higher intake of dietary fiber is associated with a lower risk of bowel cancer. It can help to regulate blood glucose, and because of the high fiber content, it's quite satiating, meaning it fills you up quickly. So there have been various studies that have shown positive effects on body composition in obese and overweight people. In fact, by now, we almost certainly know that oats are doing more good for us than bad, and any of the negative effects that have arisen during the farming process of oats, I could almost guarantee are far outweighed by the positive effects that we know eating oats can have on your health. You know, if you got most of the population to have oats and a scoop of protein powder for their breakfast, every morning. We would be a lot healthier as a population, there would be a lot less disease. So for the majority of people looking for a healthy breakfast, I would say eating oats is probably good advice. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Now this is a mashup of clips from Stephen Bartlett's podcast with him, so I would take this with a pinch of salt, but let's have a look anyway. Protein supplements. <laughs> protein is massively hyped. Most people are having nearly twice as much protein in their diets as they need, okay. and most of it will be converted to sugars and fat. If you consume a whey protein shake, we already know that this is an extremely absorbable form of protein. In fact, it's one of the most bioavailable proteins that we have, even when we compare it to things like meats. When you consume protein, it is absorbed in the small intestine, and eventually it's filtered by the liver where the amino acids will enter the bloodstream, and they're used by our muscles and other bodily tissues. And yes, it's possible for protein to be converted into sugar, or more specifically glucose in the body, but this is really only done by our bodies when it's necessary. For example, during periods of extreme calorie restriction where your body needs to prioritize energy production. For most people who are physically active, Consuming a protein shake, the amino acids in that are going to go towards rebuilding and repairing your muscles. And actually, probably just a small fraction of that is going to end up being converted into glucose. Again, this clip, I think in isolation, almost implies that protein supplements are gonna to lead to excess body fat. But this is literally only possible if you're in a hypercaloric condition and it's not exclusive to protein shakes. So this next one I think is pretty much his most controversial take. Let's have a little look. Exercise doesn't help weight loss. No, all the studies show that. The only caveat to that is if you have changed your diet, improved your diet, and you've lost some weight, at maintaining some exercise does help prevent it going back up again. Now, I might surprise you and go against most of the fitness influencers. I actually agree with him. So this paper looked at 14 different studies that were basically looking at the effects of exercise on weight loss without dietary intervention. And they found that exercise did work, but only to a very small degree. And the average weight loss was around 1.7 kilograms, but this was in overweight and obese people where that's probably not going to make a huge difference. However, what Tim has fatally forgot to mention is that yes, the research shows exercise alone isn't gonna have a huge effect on weight loss, but it also shows that neither is focusing on your diet alone. But when studies have combined the two, that's where we see the real results. So instead of saying exercise doesn't help with weight loss, I would hope he means exercise does help with weight loss, but only when paired with a dietary intervention. Okay, final one. Now, to be honest, I might have just included this because it feeds my bias nicely. Bitter, many bitter yeah. things are actually good. Um, you know, one reason coffee's so healthy for you is it's got full of polyphenols and, you know, I, recommend coffee over orange juice anytime as a health drink. 
So there have been many observational studies looking at the effects of drinking coffee on our risk of certain diseases and also just dying from any cause. And most of those had been quite positive. So what researchers did was they decided to do another analysis to see how many cups of coffee might be optimal. And what we see is a bit of a, a J-shaped curve, meaning that as we increase our coffee intake from zero cups a day up to around three, four cups a day, our risk of various diseases and overall death decreases. But as we then start to increase our coffee intake past the three or four cups a day mark, then the risk starts to increase again. Now, I always get comments on my videos and I'm going to get comments on this video as well saying, well, just because they found this doesn't mean it was the coffee that affected their risk of these diseases. It might be that because they drink more coffee, they also have other tendencies that makes them healthier. And in some situations, that argument might be valid, but science has come a long way and there's a lot of things now that researchers can do with their statistics to take into account some of those factors that might also be having an impact. For example, the graph I just showed you was from results pulled from lots of different studies. And I've just looked at one of these studies in particular. And in that study, they controlled for smoking status, body mass index, physical activity level, alcohol intake, even down to their specific dietary factors, like their calories, their macronutrient breakdown. And yes, there are limitations with these things as well. Most of them are self-reported and they're not objectively measured. But what it means in this case is that coffee still had an effect on reduction of disease risk, even after taking into account all of those things I just mentioned. Coffee actually has a significant amount of fiber for something you drink. And like Tim said, it does contain polyphenols and certain compounds that might have a positive effect on our health through other mechanisms. Of course, it doesn't matter what type of coffee that you consume. If you have three or four lattes with added syrup every day, you can probably expect that to counteract any of the positive effects of the actual coffee. But the effects of coffee, the caffeine in coffee on performance and health is for a whole nother video. But for now, I hope you've liked this video. And if you wanna see more of this, pop the link in the comments and we can review someone else's health and fitness advice next time. Thanks for watching everyone. And I will see you soon in another video.